food hygiene, kitchen hygiene. Jim and his mother have arrived at Dr. Nancy's apartment. On their way, his mother tells him Nancy was a high school classmate and a pleasant person to be around and talk to. Let's find out. Coming! Oh, Rachel! Long time, my friend! Long, long time, my long time friend. This is my son. Oh, he has really grown. What is your name, boy? James, but you can call me Jim. Nice to meet you and feel much welcome. To what do I owe this visit? Actually, it's my son who is the guest today. He needs to talk to you about food and nutrition. That is, if you can spare some time. No problem at all. Besides, today I'm not going to work. Thank you, Rachel. The boy is all yours. I'll leave you two and rush back home. All right. See you soon. Now, Jim, so what is it you want to know about food and hygiene? Okay, Dr. Nancy. Let's begin with kitchen hygiene. Please call me Nancy. All right. First, you need to understand what is food hygiene. Okay, I know something about hygiene from my mother. It is the preservation of human health. Did she also tell you about personal hygiene? Yes. Why? Because you need personal and kitchen hygiene to prevent food from contamination. Without these actions, you provide conditions for disease causing microorganisms that cause food spoilage and poisoning. And uh, what are these conditions? Well, germs thrive where there is dirt, darkness, moisture, and warmth. I know a lot about personal hygiene. It's all about good grooming and care of the body. Uh -huh. But kitchen hygiene? No. You are going to help me with that. The more reason why you came to me. Let's move to my kitchen and talk there. Wow! Your kitchen is bigger than ours. Look at your fridge. It's so big. I get a lot of visitors every day. And I need my food to be safe and fresh all the time. You know what? All I am about to tell you is actually common knowledge. I thought so, but still it's nice to hear it from a professional. Mm-hmm. I will take that as a compliment. All right. Always make the following a habit. The kitchen bin should be clean, have a fitting lid, and be emptied at least daily. Storage equipment like the fridge, meat safe, vegetable racks, and the food store must be kept clean at all time. Also, cooking, serving, and other food containers should be cleaned well and dried before storage. You don't want germs breeding around your kitchen, right? Definitely. But even more importantly, the kitchen area and the floor should be free from any food spills, fruit or vegetable peelings, as this would attract rodents and insects, as well as cause accidental falls. Hmm, I get it. My mom always says the house should have adequate lighting to avoid bumping into objects and falling like a pig. Correct. You got a sharp memory. Not really. You said most of these things are common knowledge. Then do you mind telling me what you know? No problem at all. Now, do not handle cooked food with bare hands or store it for a long time under warm conditions. Instead, follow the principle of fast in, fast out when storing foods. Mm -hmm. Plus, use clean water to wash utensils and fruits as well as to prepare food. Wow! That was nice! You also should make it a habit of boiling kitchen clothes on a daily basis. 
You mean actual boiling? Yes, to kill germs, of course. And finally, the work surface must be washed daily with soap and warm water. Now, we are getting into a more serious issue and I want you to pay even more attention. Carelessness at this point can lead to food spoilage and poisoning. Hmm. I get a feeling you're going to talk about proper ways to handle food. You read my mind. Always wear protective clothing, including aprons, headscarf, gloves, shoes, and so on. This helps prevent outdoor dirt from contaminating food, surfaces, and equipment. I understand, but what would you need a headscarf for while cooking? To prevent pieces of hair from falling on the work surface or even in the food. Oh yeah, I remember one day my mom and I were eating in an hotel when she found an insect in her meal. We left with immediate effect. Ow, that was awful. I guess that was a result of poor handling of food. But the worst is to handle food with dirty hands. Always wash your hands with warm soapy water before handling food and after a visit to the toilet. After handling refuse and money as well as after touching other parts of the body. Hmm. I hope your mother taught you to always keep your nails short and clean. You bet she did, Dr. Nancy. Yes. Um, is it wrong to taste food using your fingers after you've washed them thoroughly? <laughs> you are so funny. Testing food to check you put enough salt isn't bad. But how you do it makes it a bad or a good habit. Use a serving spoon instead. And if you ever thought of smoking, please... Don't do it in the kitchen. It is a bad habit. I hate smoking. Our science teacher says it causes lung cancer. I can't agree more. If you cannot avoid catching diseases such as typhoid, cholera, dysentery, as well as sore throat and skin infections, please don't go near the kitchen. Know what I mean? Uh, I think so. Oh, what a bad host I am. How can I have you in my house for the first time without serving you even a drink? What do you want to drink, boy? Lemonade. Got it. Thank you.